I would say the biggest misconception is when others watch me, they don't understand actually that I'm not the villain that they're seeing on TV. So I've been on Teen Mom, it would be my 10th year. I started in 2008 and the first episode ever aired in 2009 on 16 and Pregnant where I had my gorgeous daughter, Sophia. When I found out I was pregnant, for one, I was like suspicious that I was. I went with one of my girlfriends to Planned Parenthood where I was on getting my birth control. You know, I took my, <laughs> my birth control religiously to you're pregnant, I'm yelling at the lady, then I'm crying, then I'm trying to call Sophia's father. Everything was not working out, no one's picking up. And I had to go home and tell my parents that I was pregnant. My mom used to say, if I ever got pregnant, I'd be kicked out of the house. So I was more than scared to tell my mother. And instead of my mother saying, like, get out, she was like crying and said, you know, I raised you to not, you know, kill something that's alive. And I learned now as an adult and a parent that what you tell your kids really affects them and how they communicate with you. There is so many questions about how I told Sophia's father, Derek, about me being pregnant with her. I actually was so conflicted at that time because he did not pick up the phone when I initially found out and I called him first thing above anyone. Derek died when I was eight months pregnant with oh. Sophia and it literally like, crushed my life. He was driving with his friends um, on a street by my house and the car hit black ice. Derek had his neck broken. My mother did not like him. She didn't even know that he had passed away yet. I got off the phone with my girlfriend after she told me he died. Before I even sat down to have breakfast after finding out the news, my mom's just like wishing horrible upon Derek and I literally couldn't even eat breakfast. I just left and I just said, well, you're lucky because he died today and it really, really hurt. We have seen my mom and I be very aggressive to each other at times. It was becoming a very unhealthy environment for us to be together. And at this time, my parents were in the middle of either getting a divorce or not. And being an adult and not having a car, it's always a pull effect. I wanna go grocery shopping, I wanna do this, but I have to ask my parents and if they're not in the mood and then they're in the middle of a divorce and all of these other things, it feels like I was like stifled. So my mother goes inside the house and I tried to talk to my dad about going to the grocery store with him and my father just wanted to leave like he normally would he would just leave and go do his own thing you know I'm holding everything I'm like a little teenager <laughs> holding everything my huge baby seats my bags all this stuff my dad's not helping me I'd go to the door the door was locked and I couldn't even believe that my mother locked us out it was like freezing cold so I'm ringing the bell I'm trying to get her to come and then finally she comes to the door and then she's running all the way upstairs and I'm dragging everything up on my own and she's going through my mail. The little bit of independence that I have in the house, like my own mail, my own bills, I want all those responsibilities and I couldn't handle the control. So my mother threw the mail at me and a shirt and some other things that came in and it hit Sophia because she was in my hands and she started crying. I snapped. So I put Sophia in the other room. I went back in for my mail and my mother um, continued to do her like throwing of the mail and hitting hitting me. And I, I just had to retaliate. And that was that day where I was like, I want my freedom. And it was a sad, sad situation I put my whole family in but I had to break that cycle of abuse and I had to call the police. And I'm happy still to this day that I did that. After the first fight and everything that I went through, I also had court issues um, for Sophia's social security and his mom and all these issues that were in the press. I just wanted to graduate college and I just wanted to move Sophia far, far away from a place that seemed so dark to me. So I took Sophia to Florida with me and we literally got to sit on the ocean and the beach and just really enjoy that. That's something I'll never regret. I really needed that. So Florida did not work out. I had my daughter. I had to also pay a lot of fees um, when I gave birth. Birth is not cheap. And even though I was on my mother's insurance, um, Blue Cross Blue Shield still had some high expenses that they didn't want to cover. I worked three jobs at all times, went full-time to school, college. There are some days I didn't sleep ever, especially 
studying, working, and being with Sophia. Paying for a babysitter because half the time my grandparents and other people, you know, they don't want to really take on the responsibility or really be there for their grandchild. My mother and I, getting in our physical education, I had to have state CPS babysitters. So Derek's mother stole Sophia from a babysitter. Your child cannot talk yet. You can't ask your child what happened that day. And I saw something that I never saw before in my child when I drove up to the babysitter's house. And Sophia would start crying like shooken. Sophia for two days was traumatic. I would pull up to the driveway and she started crying. So I had to call CPS and I had to say, there's something going on with my daughter. I don't know what it is. I need my parents right now. And I have to, I have to graduate college. So I got to graduate. It was a huge thing for me to graduate and that's kind of when that brought my mother and I back together. CPS dropped everything. My mother got to come back in our lives. My father started coming around more and my family started helping me more after that traumatic situation that Sophie and I went through. Literally still to this day, I'm so thankful that she's safe and she's with me. I fight hard to be the best protective mom I can be. My mother and father's relationship was a little um, hostile, to say the least. If I resembled anything on my father, and it was so hateful even on my uncle's side, they would say, don't be a Michael or don't act like a Michael. And I literally wanted to become the opposite. My father. And I grew up with a little bit of um, just hate, a hateful aura in my family and a little bit racist. I, I couldn't be friends with certain people. And I don't know why that bothered me so much. There was this point where we like went on a break or something from filming. I actually thought we were done filming this show. So I was kind of like, you know, moving on my life. But when I left Miami, I literally just got deeper and deeper back into depression. I was always like researching every day. Like, what do I want to do with my life? I have my degrees. I don't want to use them. A lot of stuff in college just kind of ruined my inspiration when I got my degrees for. And the funniest thing happened. I feel like I want to dedicate my life to God, I wanna go get baptized and I, I wanna just start living different. So I went and I got baptized and the oddest thing happened to me like a week later. I find myself around a lot of my friends who are in the porn industry. All my girlfriends were strippers or adult stars. That was a crowd at 21 with drinking, drugs, every other thing. That is where I found myself and I don't know why? A lot of the sex stuff that I that I was about and a lot of my friends, they didn't really have the best of my interest. And I know I need to be strong for a lot of the women who are stuck in adult entertainment, who strive to fix their lives, change their lives. That's just not who they are and that's just not who I am. And I see so many mothers dabbling in that. We find ourselves in a very vulnerable place being single mothers and God only knows if you've lost your baby's dad, your parents are a little bit horrible to you, you're on TV and you're trying to you know, live out these other expectations of people who want so much from you and it's about money, money, money. I'm the hardest worker I've ever seen, I feel like. I'm sick and tired of trying to be so perfect to make the right choices. And those times when I just was like, you know, is God real? Why did this stuff happen to me? I just found myself staying closer and closer to God every time because my life and my struggles would just get worse and worse. And God was really the only person there through some crazy stuff. And my family, my parents, they don't understand. I would call my mom and my dad. And you know, they would just act like, oh, that's part of life. I really beat myself up still about my body, but I think I learned to just kind of say, I love myself for who I am. I really just had went through so many weird times of puberty and changing and pregnancy. And then you saw me, you know, dabble with plastic surgery. And a lot of my friend doctors will do whatever you want. And um, sometimes it's too much. When you wake up from a surgery <laughs> and your face looks like extra long, big chin, and you're used to like a little chin, I found myself so insecure. Like I literally, would stare at my face so much every day. That ate me up and it was so horrible for me dating on top of everything else. 
during those times. But when you're a shattered woman, just like, just picked apart to the core and like you're just people pleasing and you're just traveling, you're working and you're just trying to date, you're just trying to act normal, you're trying to act like your age. It was just so much trying for me. I was falling apart. The scene with Morgan Freeman, who at the end of my career on Teen Mom was the last person I ever talked to. When I saw Morgan Freeman initiate the word to associate myself with porn star with Macy, I see someone who used to say that this is an MTV family who is there for my daughter being born and all these things turn on me and turn the other cast members on me. I can't think of a day where I wasn't being poked, where I wasn't being pushed, where I wasn't having the producers talk to my parents and wish me one way or act this way about Farah. I was always like the villain. Sometimes I just can't always be the villain because of how I was villainized in my own family growing up. My mother was out of town, she was out of town often. I was at my grandparents' house. My grandmother, I don't know why she would hate on me. You know, half the time she'd be brushing my hair and saying I'm the most beautiful child she's ever seen. She would like parade me around to her colleagues at work. And then other times she would be on the phone for hours and only say the worst things to my mother while she's in a whole other country. There was just so many countless conversations and I would wanted to try to talk to my mom and just trying to saying my side of this story. My grandma always would have the phone. I'm like a young child. I don't even know what I would do wrong sometimes. That's how conflicted I was. And I just wanted to talk to my mom who was always out of town. My mom was just the one person who I loved so dearly growing up. And when people start switching like your mother and your grandmother and women in your family, my sister's jealous of me all the time, you know, whether it was because I had my dad there or whatever is going on. My sister actually, she was on a few of the episodes in the beginning and my sister and I just always haven't really gotten along. You know, we would get in physical fights. My mother treated my sister worse. I always felt so bad for my sister. So my mother was a top sales executive for Lucent Technologies, which so many people know about back in the day. My mom is amazing. She's very good at business. My mom also went through a midlife crisis while we were filming Teen Mom. She got her severance package. She retired early. And that's when she just decided, like, she's an actress on TV for Teen Mom. I don't agree with that because I'm not acting. I'm showing my real life while I'm being poked on, jerked this way, that way. Now I'm gonna like be villainized on a TV show. And my mother just catered to that. I think I'm the one person who loves her the most on this earth. She had on family boot camp. the one question she wanted me to be asked for my lie detector test is if I really love her. I really love her. And she got to hear that. But still goes on my show and keeps saying that I don't love her and I don't know what love is. I don't have that in me. That's all I can say for my mom. I hope by how I interact with many of my female friends that I can break that cycle of women hating on other women. The betrayal, the jealousy, the things that I grew up with in my own female dynamic in my family. I really hope that I break that cycle every day and I show that definitely with my daughter and many of my other colleagues that I work with. So the one thing that I know about myself is I own my highs, my lows, my sex, my drama, my fails, my parenting wins, all of these things, I own everything and I take that responsibility. And I really just wanna break the cycle of showing this to my daughter, being there for other women, understanding that, and the core group of business women that I work with and how we come together is such a beautiful thing. So I really hope to do a show that is having fun and enlightening and engaging other women and talking about the parenting fails, what I'm trying in dating. I want to be an influencer that influences change.